and the, the Board of Elections uh, is having a teleconference meeting. Uh, we're performing this under the uh, open meetings law. We posted this on the website. Uh, the agenda item is budget. Uh, we've invited the public to listen to the uh, meeting at the Board of Elections. So if anybody from the public is listening, welcome. Uh, let's uh, let's take attendance. I'm Jim Shalek. You, you, you want to uh, go, Mary Ann, Nahid, and everybody else, so we can identify everybody on the call? Nahid Kozeme. Mary Ann Keith. Alexander. David Naiman. Kevin Karpinski. Is there someone new t to the call? Yeah, I heard a little somebody come in. Yes, um, it's Lynn Garland. I'm a citizen. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you. And the staff is uh, present too, Margaret? Yes, sir. Uh, Margie Rohr, Lisa Marino, and Margaret Jurgensen. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Jim, may yes, I ask a question? Sure. Um, are, are we being recorded today? Yes. Is that correct, Margaret? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay, and, and minutes are being taken, I assume? Yes, this is a meeting. Yeah, okay. a yeah, yeah. we're viewing this, David, as a, you know, it's a regular meeting uh, open to the public. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, the agenda item is budget. Um, Mary Ann, our secretary, uh, had expressed an interest in, in discussing some correspondence that went back and forth to Margaret. Just to give a brief uh, overview, and then I'll, I'll throw it to Margaret because uh, I'll defer to her recollection of the dates. This past Friday late, uh, Margaret got communication from the county. And Margaret, jump in if my, my dates and times are off. Margaret got the correspondence from the county basically asking agencies and you know, all the agencies and commissions, et cetera, for a, a 2% reduction in their, in their expenditures, in their budget. And the turnaround time was days. So Margaret notified me. I don't remember exactly when. It might have been over the weekend. I don't recall. And I saw the correspondence. Uh, Margaret, Margaret's uh, opinion as election director was to, because of the cuts we've already had and monies that we haven't gotten that we were hoping to get, and, you know, as we all know, we, we all want more money, but we haven't gotten it, her view, which I agreed with, was to see if they would consider an exemption for the Board of Elections because of the cuts and monies withheld that we have not seen and because of the materials we want to buy we don't have enough money for. So I agreed to that. Uh, Margaret sent the letter uh, back requesting an exemption. I don't think we've heard a response. Um, and, and that's where we are. Certainly, if, it, if it's rejected, you know, we'll have to go into uh, maybe another one of these conference calls or at the regular meeting if we have time to discuss uh, expenditure reductions and, and uh, how we can get to the 2% reduction. But as of now, Margaret, we haven't heard anything. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, Margaret? Yes, that is correct. Is Margaret on? Yes, I am. Hello. Uh, hello. I guess they're uh, not dead. I mean, yeah. Hello. Up. Can you hear us? Yeah, Margaret. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, yes. I did. Uh, oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I basically, you know, correct me if I was wrong on the, on the no, timing you of are, what happened. You are correct. You're. Uh, we received a letter from Tim Firestein that informed us that. Uh, the mo the additional monies that had been allocated were frozen and were not going to be distributed in the FY16 budget and that uh, we had to reduce and to suggest a placeholder cut of 2% which was 128,128. You and I had the discussion and we said there's no money to cut we will take the money out of the MD voters uh, line item for the voting. Hello. Hello. We are taking the monies out Hello. of. Yes. Jim, I'm still. Jim, I can hear you. Yeah, but we lost Margaret. Can, can you hear me? Problem with that phone. Can you hear me? Jim, can, government issue. Jim, Hello? can you hear? Can, can you, you hear, hear us? us? Margaret. Can you hear us? 
maybe they should call in on a cell phone or something. They can't. Hello, this is she Margaret. Thought, she thinks we're listening. I, I, I'm listening. Oh, they can't answer that. But she may not know that we're not Hello. hearing her. Hello, Hello, Jim. One moment. Where's your phone? Is it maybe the Margaret? service? Margaret? Yeah. I uh, hit the mute button again or something. Like that. Can you hear us? hear us? Hello, can Friends you hear us? Calling Carol has Hello. Kevin? I thought maybe it was a Margaret? Hi, I'm here, but well, I, I don't think... they're calling me. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hi, we're here. Yeah. We don't know what's happening to the phone. We're hearing everything that's being said. Um, I'm going to try to move this phone over. Jim, perhaps I can ask a question while we're, we while we're waiting for Margaret. We can't call in to the well, other I think, phone. I think so uh, Lynn, can you hear us? Lynn Garland, because there's a member of the public. I, don't, I want to make We're sure she's hearing everything. everything. Margie, call into the okay. Hello? This is Margaret. We, Margaret? Yes. All right, I'm can you hear me? call in with a different phone. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Okay. Right, I'm going to hang up, Kevin. What I was saying was that um, the county froze the 150000 additional. The county executive did that. And then we discussed the 128128 which we said as a placeholder we would take out of MD voters uh, system it's a SBE line item and that's where it's at and that is take that off turn that off okay are you guys all there yeah. all right we've switched devices on our end okay Margaret. so we ended up uh, sending that in as a placeholder and at this time we uh, have not heard from the county executive's office I talked to Mr. Subin and reminded him that uh, Mr. Leggett had said previously that outreach was uh, a priority and he is going to talk to Tim and Mr. Leggett on our behalf and right now, all I can tell you is that they are receiving the various requests and the cuts are being made countywide, and that's where we're at. It what, you, will, what you asked for, Margaret, you asked, you asked for an exemption. Yes, I did. But we had to give that placeholder amount of 128 And the placeholder is from what expense, Margaret? The State Board MD Voters Charge. And what it, can you explain that, please? It's the MD voters charge for the voter registration system. Margaret, this is Alex. Does that come out of the was the line item that's colored yellow that says other equipment rentals MD voters? Yes. Yeah. I don't actually. I don't think I have a copy of the fiscal 16 budget um, unless I'm missing something. Uh, I, I don't know that any of us do. Okay. This, these cuts are being made from the FY16 budget, right? That is correct. They're being made from that budget, the upcoming budget. Taking effect, I guess, today. The, yes, it went into effect today. And, and, and this is, David, can you explain why you picked that particular um, line item to be the placeholder? Because this, the county has to pay that, whether that's, uh, the county has to pay that. That's a, an expense that's 50-50. I'm not going to, uh, it's not realistic to, we're already $2.8 million in the hole with no allocation of funds for just the new voting system plus all of the expenditures that are coming in as it relates to the printers that's supposed to go with the poll book, the ballot, uh, the ballot uh, polling units, the sleeves that privacy sleeves it's it's insane to think that we can cut any amount of money all right but so, so then it's not really uh, I mean it's not really responsive to the request you received and I understand we re we're requesting or, or you've requested to be exempted but the they've asked for suggestions of cuts and we're giving them something that actually can't be cut David it's Margie um, in looking at our actual expenditures year to date for MD voters and looking at the budgeted amount for FY16, um, if we removed the 128000 from the FY16 line item, we would still have approximately $372,000 uh, in that line item, which we felt would be realistic for 
um, FY16 based on uh, invoices to date for FY15. Um, whereas other line items, it would not be easy to, to take any hit at all. Um, and while there may be um, 10 or 20,000 overage, you know, where, where we really needed an extra 20,000 in that line item, we felt that that was a realistic place to take it, that should we not be granted the exemption, um, that may actually be able to be a, a real cut. So Mar Margie, this is Kevin, and that's because the board oftentimes does not receive the state's bills until well after the budgetary year is over, correct? That is correct, and in fact, we have not um, really been given full figures on what to expect for FY16 yet. Well, but okay, so it. this is Mary Ann, uh, and I'm going to be... Uh, fairly short and, and, and brief here. I'm, I'm dealing with a uh, personal uh, situation of a grave magnitude. As you all know, my son was married Saturday. Um, he's been in Bermuda on his honeymoon and was in an accident today. He's having surgery as we speak and uh, with two broken legs uh, that, we, that we know of. Uh, but uh, I requested uh, that this call be put together when I read uh, the email from Margaret uh, last evening that she sent at 5.30, um, four days after the uh, uh, receipt of what she got late on Friday. Uh, the board needed to be contacted about this. Certainly, if not uh, an outreach email over the weekend, then Monday. Uh, and all of this discussion about why we're taking this, why we're doing that, et cetera, et cetera, that is not something that is a staff decision. That is something that is a policy board decision. And in fact, the uh, letter that Margaret sent forward uh, was stating the board this, the board that. The board knew nothing. And uh, I'm, 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 you know, not pleased with that uh, in the least. Uh, I, I don't understand why the lack of, dare I call it, outreach to the board on an issue of this magnitude uh, to, to go this route, especially when board members individually had been very involved in this budget and lobbying uh, for additional funds here. So you can start, Margaret, by explaining why the board was not notified. Can I just add to that? I support everything that Mary Ann just said. I, I want to ask the same question of Jim, because you're the board president, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you speak for all the board members when the board members don't have any idea what the issues are. No, that's correct. And 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 so uh, and, and I I mean I do say it with all due respect because I know that it's an important job and I know that there are times when uh, the board president speaks for the board. But as Marianne said, this is a you know this was a huge issue to us. Marianne and I personally met with council members in order to to help with um, getting resources for the board, and um, and so. Um, you know, well, he uh, was involved in those meetings as well. Uh, I mean, she, didn't, she was on her way. She didn't get there, but she was, you know, uh, involved in, in, in uh, wanting and being proactive with the uh, council members. Sure. Well, then, yeah, my, the, the, the response that Margaret had drafted, which I agreed to, was was basically only to ask for an exemption, you know, to to give us time to, you know, look at this. but. We asked for an exemption. We didn't say we're not going to participate, and we didn't make cuts. We just asked for an exemption, you know, like a stay, which we have not heard. And certainly if they deny our exemption, you know, then my view was the whole board has to get together and decide on cuts and budget issues and items and, and all that. But all, we, all, all that we did now was just ask for an exemption. Well, Jim, actually, no, you also earmarked what Margie said and what Margie said. No, you said earmarked an amount of money. I mean, what, what, what Margie and Margaret said was that they gave a line item and an amount of money. And so it wasn't just a request for an exemption. It was actually a proposed cut. Um, and if they didn't get your sign-off on that, then there's zero board members who were involved. Hold on. Margaret, is that true? You gave them a line item to be cut 
Yes, I did give them a line item uh, for the hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars. And uh, when I met with but Jim yesterday, Jim, I, excuse me, did you discuss this with Jim? Yes, I discussed it with Jim yesterday. But it's not money out of our pocket, is my understanding. No, it's the monies that go to the state board of elections. Right. Which and the county has to pay. That the county will have to pay. Additionally, the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That money was just straight out taken away from us. It was not transferred to the department. And I wrote that letter because the letter to from Tim was to the department director and I was addressing the department's uh, concern that we were underfunded by the amount of money that I put in the memo. Well, Margaret, you didn't say the department. Your memo says the board. As Marianne said, you said the board multiple times in that memo. That's the name of the department. It's the Board of Elections. Well, um, it was the seen board does approves the budget. The board works on the budget all the time. I mean, this is not something, I mean, I even had a budget committee, for heaven's sake, that worked on things and brought it to the whole board. I mean, you know the feeling of the board members uh, regarding this issue. I would just add also that if the county executive was asking for um, each department to identify realistic cuts, which is how I read what, um, what Mr. Firestein's memo was doing, I think it's kind of a big deal to um, make a decision that either says, do we have to play, or says, here's a cut, but it's not real because it's really a state expense that's mandatory. Because it also could be that board members would look at the budget, and especially, you, you know, um, we have some members of the board who are new and may have fresh ideas about what to do. Board members might look at the budget and, and, and identify a different area that they would want to cut. Um, I personally think that polling booths are a waste. Um, and I realize that the state thinks that they're needed and that the state thinks that having people vote standing up is somehow better than voting sitting down. But it's a huge expenditure that, you know, I personally think would be, you know, um, would, would be expendable. But uh, and I'm, I'm only one person, obviously. But um, under this process, we don't really get the opportunity to do that. And as I understand it, the deadline for submitting this is, you know, uh, um, was it was, was it the end of this week? That's the, the deadline for for, for 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 submitting any suggested cuts. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. But the example you gave, David, is it's just like the voting system. That purchase will be made, and that cost will be shifted immediately to the local boards of election. So this is just like MD voters. It's still well, an expense that has to be made. Well, you're also making but the my that point the state is will, will that the money proceeding before the point uh -huh. that I was making with regards to the selection of MD voters as the line item to remove the hundred twenty eight thousand dollars it is that line item that has the greatest likelihood to not be billed out at the full amount And as for the $150,000, that's why we sent the letter requesting the full exemption of the full amount, of the full amount of the $150,000 plus the $128,000. That money that the county council allocated to the Board of Elections is frozen. It is not coming over to the Board of Elections for expenditures until the county council reviews the FY, FY16 savings plan. Mark, Margaret, this is Alex. I had a question. Let's say, I mean, are we bound by this designation of ND voters or if, if no. something denies could be to submit something else if we wish to do so? Yes, monies can be moved later if a cut is given. 
Okay, so meaning we don't, we're not necessarily bound, uh, and I'm not saying I disagree with that, I don't know enough about it yet to make it a decision, but if, if we decided that the money should come from another line item, would we be able to make that choice uh, with the county? Yes, sir. That doesn't sound like a way to win friends and influence people with the council and the executive if they propose. We, they ask us for a proposed cut, we give them a proposed cut, they do it, and then we change it. Um, they're, they're not going to be too happy with us um, under those circumstances. And if we need um, their support in order to get additional resources for this election, as it looks increasingly like we do, um, I'm not sure that's a, a good strategy. I personally would prefer that we be given a number of options by the staff and that the board that get a decision as to what it would um, propose to do or maybe even propose more than one option for cuts if they turn down the request to, uh, to exempt us um, completely. Because um, I think there, you know, there might be a number of suggestions that, um, that might be worthy of consideration other than these kind of phantom cuts where um, um, you know, they're, they're, they're cuts that we think that the state will charge us less, but whatever the state charges us is whatever, is, you know, is whatever we're going to have to spend. And I think that's reasonable. I mean, if they, if they turn us down with our request for an exemption, yeah, then the board, the board will decide, you know, what, uh, what cuts there'll be. Do we know more? Well, uh, well that, uh, uh, Jim, Jim, I'm glad to hear you say that because I think uh, if I hadn't raised the issue yesterday, uh, maybe we'd still be in the dark. <laughs> well, no, Margaret sent out the, the correspondence. <laughs> yeah. After it was already sent. Um, I did, as soon as I received this, I notified Jim. I briefed him on the matter. Why didn't you notify I, Marianne? Because She's Jim the is the president of the oh, board. Oh, listen, David. I was the secretary, and I never was informed on your, this kind of action. Yes, but you're telling me the name. Uh, was no, 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 no. It, it's not. A, it's not a matter of me. This is. This is an item that would have gone forward to the yeah, entire board. Attention. Entire board. Yeah. Everybody's attention. Okay. You, you met with the executive, I mean the county people, I didn't know anything about it and I learned it by mistake. We I mean, told you at a public board meeting that we were going to do that. No, no. Yes, yes you, we did. You made arrangement and you made, but he told me, doesn't matter, that's the past, I'm not going to bring it. Nobody told me that, do you want to come or do you don't want to come, so don't bring that one. But that Mary is Anna, absolutely not true. That Mary is not true. Mary and I think that the whole board should be in form of something to this affect the budget cut and all of those. That's a different issue. Okay, pass. Go ahead. Well, I mean, the board, I mean, this is all still an open open topic. And when, Margaret, when do we think we'll hear about our exemption request? I don't think we'll hear about it until uh, next week. Okay. Well, well what are we going to do in the meantime? May I just suggest that if, if David's suggestion is is acceptable to the board that the staff be prepared to give some options at the next board meeting and then that will give an opportunity for the entire board to fully consider what the options are. My, my suggestion was not the next board meeting because I don't know what the county executive schedule is. I think that's too, too yeah. late. Right. Other, what we know is is the deadline that he gave. Um, what I, what, in order for my suggestion to work, we have to work with the executive on what on what his schedule is and we have to withdraw whatever the staff has already given on our behalf until we have a chance to consider the options. Well, I guess my, my question, have we formally submitted the response that's due by tomorrow, uh, Margaret? Or do we yes, have we have. That, yes, or? I did. When I submitted the letter, I submitted the $128,000 out of MD voters. Was that included in the material we were sent? No, it's it, no I, because it's a it's a line on a spreadsheet. Well, I mean, we didn't. I mean, I, I didn't know that you had submitted that. Well, whatever. Anyway, the, the 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 point the point is is that we didn't get a chance to consider any options for that whatsoever, um, which I think we should. 
Um, it sounds like what you're, what you're saying, Margaret, is that you don't expect that we're going to get an answer on the exemption until next week. And next week, I mean, and the deadline for submitting this is, is tomorrow. Yes, the deadline was, yeah, is tomorrow. Well, then perhaps we, we, we uh, should ask for you to, 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 uh, to give us options uh, by tomorrow noon. Mr. President, I'm supposed to be in a meeting with the State Board tomorrow. Um, it would be very difficult for us to do something like that. Additionally, we place that money in as a placeholder. Right. And so we've met the deadline, and I believe that we've made a strong case, and we have an advocate, Mr. Subin, asking for an exemption for the full amount. and. I believe that we should wait and hear from Mr. Firestein and Mr. Leggett. And Mr. S did, uh, did Mike agree with with uh, the he way he to agreed it? he agreed to be our advocate to give us uh, to advocate to give us a full exemption. And w was he aware of the 128,000 issue? Yes, he's aware of. Well, he has access to the the basis documents. Uh, does Mr. Firestein, do you think, Margaret, that Mr. Firestein understands that this is a placeholder that we might change, uh, you know, the, 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 the sort of the designated line item to be cut, um, you know, from what was submitted yesterday? Uh, I can try to reach him and tell him that. Yeah, I mean, that might be, uh, that might be wise to do, just that he knows that, that you know, put it in as a placeholder because, you know, the board did not have a chance to, you know, fully deliberate over it. It may be that the board agrees that that's where it should come from, but, um, you know, with, 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 without considering other options, I, I, I guess we want him to know that it's possible that it might change, but I, I, I guess, I, I don't know what he's expecting. Maybe he is expecting that this is, you know, whatever we give him is where it should be cut if the exemption is denied. Alex, I agree with that suggestion, and I suggest that it be done in writing so that it's clear that the board has not taken action on it and that we also request of him when it is that he would need to, you know, if he doesn't give us the exemption, when it is he would need to get from us a board action on, uh, on, a, su on a suggested cut. Let's see, because he says in his letter uh, that... He wants it by tomorrow. Well, they're transmitting it to the council by the week of July 6th. Which is next week. So maybe there's a little bit of wiggle room in there. You know? Yeah. Right, but I'm saying that, that, that Margaret's note to him, which can indicate that the, that, that the suggestion so far has not been voted on by the board, can also ask by when, you know, to, can ask him to let us know if he doesn't grant the exemption, to let us know by when he needs you know, a, a board action on that, and then we could schedule um, a phone call next week, right. or a meeting, whatever. Yeah, Margaret, I mean, I, David's suggestion, you know, just a, a quick note saying the board hasn't voted on it, if our exemption is denied, blah, blah, just, you know, kind of give it the wiggle room that Alex says that uh, it's, it's possibly subject to change or maybe not subject to change. I'd be happy okay. to send an email and CC the board to Mr. Firestein. Now, how does this MD voters line out of more really work? I guess it is it, 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 that the number really doesn't mean a whole lot because whatever the you know the, the, the state buys, we have to pay for regardless of whether it's higher or lower than the budget. That's correct. Okay. It's the MD voters, it's the voter registration database. And it's a software and whatever changes are required to go with the software. So like if I'm looking here at, if this was fiscal year 15, which is, which is now over, but the final projection was like 864,000. Are you saying that they could, despite what the final projection is, they could charge us a million bucks for that and we still have to, we still have to pay for it? That is correct. Yeah. The, you know, it just, there's a lot of unknown costs with the entire voter, the, between the new voter system and the interconnectivity as the way these systems work. Um, 
I am not aware of any, aside from the software interface of the poll book with the printer to create the ballot for the ballot marking device, I, I know that there's some work that has to be done with the MD voters, but as far as I know, that's the extent of the software uh, upgrades and maintenance that needs to be done. Aren't there software changes that they're making for same-day registration? A lot of those were have been those have been done in the last year. So there's no additional need to to, to pay for software changes for same-day registration out of this current fiscal year's budget. I don't know that I because there are a lot of unknown expenses. Well, but they like have it would be been. Important for us they to find that out if we're going to cut that expense. Um, we obviously don't want to cut an expense. Well, it's obviously not realistic to cut an expense if the software changes haven't been completed. And again, these are expenses related to the voting system that you were not giving any monies for that, that we already know the current expenses you're at a negative $2.8 million. Uh, well, Robin, I think Alex, Alex and, and David make good suggestions to give us the wiggle room if you could send Firestain a, an email, CC the board, that you know they haven't voted on final changes, etc. We're still waiting to hear about our exemption, and you know, give us the wiggle room to. Yes, I will. And and, and also an indication as to when he needs any yeah. suggestions if he doesn't grant the exemption. Yes, I will. If he doesn't, that's a good point. Yes. Uh, Margaret, is there a budget spreadsheet that we could see about what's been budgeted for FY16 so we can see what those numbers are? Um, Alex, it's Margie. Um, that spreadsheet should be prepared um, next week. I'm waiting for the funds to transfer over, um, today being the first day of the fiscal year. Um, and then I'll be able to pull everything up in the system and print everything out and do the usual spreadsheet, which would be distributed at the board meeting. Okay. Okay. You, you have uh, we want it before the board meeting next week, as soon as you put it together, please. Okay. Do you have an idea what the line item for MD voters is in the budget for FY16? Uh, yes. It, as, as I, yes, it uh, currently shows at 500000 If this proposed $128,000 cut had to be made, then we'd be taking that $128 off the $500, leaving us with about $370 something. Correct. All right. Well, Mr. President, I don't know what else. Uh, what else can we discuss at this point? No, I think I think yeah, Marvin, you, I think the, the, the Alex and David make a good suggestion. We'll get a little wiggle room. And as David said, let's get a date as to you know when he would need information if our exemption is denied. Okay, I'll and, get and, that. And also, those those uh, if it turns out that we have to come up with a cut, we're going to want to see options not at the time of the meeting, but sufficiently advanced in advance that we can think about it and um, you know consider the options. And I guess, Margaret, my thought it might be if, if you're coming up with options, maybe you can tell us what are the, the top five or whatever uh, line items that you think uh, are were, are most likely to not, you know, to be under, bud under budget, meaning actual expenditures will not, you know. Will okay, not here's the problem. There is no place you're going to be under budget. Yeah. There's, you did not receive enough money to pay for your operation. You have a minimal number of election judges. You're 500 short in terms of, of what we need. We're hoping that the state is going to give us some money to help us pay for these line managers for the polling places. So you're already short election judge money. You have a bigger sample ballot that you have to send out because it needs to include the instructions. There is no place to cut your budget. You can't touch any of the permanent personnel. 
and that leaves temporaries. How about uh, things like SBE program management or other rentals and leases, DREs? Those, the DREs, just put the word new voting system there. Okay. Al okay. Alex, um, anything that's in yellow on that spreadsheet um, is a State Board of Elections item and as such, any invoices that we receive for those line items must be paid whether there's money there or not. So those are all treated the same as MD voters. And as Kevin will tell you, if it is a state bill related to the con conduct of elections and election related activities, the county is on the line for the cost. What happens if we have to pay that bill, but we don't have enough money to do so? Has that ever then happened? It happens all the time. It happened the first time they purchased this voting system. We were in the whole $4 million. The, 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 the county either pays it through a supplemental, right. or the state takes their money from some other source. Yeah. Typically what will happen is at the end of the fiscal year, there's always departments that end the year with a surplus, and then there's departments that end the year in a deficit. And so those that are in a surplus, that money goes back to the county, and it helps other departments who were in a deficit. And that's handled through a year-end transfer process, and there's no, it's not a supplemental, it's just a year-end transfer to make the books right. Speaking about surplus, what happened to 120,000 flats which we have surplus? We did not, Nahid, we did not have that as a surplus. There are monies that were still outstanding in terms of county billing the department. No, what is the money? It's being, the county is billing us for printing, postage, facility. No, I know. Who has the money? We have the money or the, uh, the county has the money? The, count, uh, the monies that we utilize are all county funds. Okay, so. I, think, I think if I can, and I don't know if this will help the situation or not, um, the, the county fiscal year ended yesterday. County bills and, count, and, and non-county bills are still being received by departments, and we are still making payments. Until such time as they close the fiscal year, which will probably be the end of August or beginning of September, those funds remain in our cost centers so that we can pay appropriate invoices with That's them. my question, yes, okay. So the funds are still with us until the fiscal year closes, and at that point, any funds that remain would be transferred back to the county. Uh, Jim, I mentioned to you about, uh, I have a conflict. Oh, that's right. Margaret, yeah, Margaret has uh, uh, to attend to a personal uh, matter. Um, all right, so Margaret, you can get the email out. I will talk to you tomorrow. Okay. First thing, I will give and, you a draft. Uh, please make sure the board is copied on everything concerning this from here on out. Uh, Mr. President, uh, yes. I will contact you in the morning and walk through my uh, requirements in terms of what you want me to do. And I do plan to follow the president's directives in terms of sharing this information with all of the board members once he has signed off on the content. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to everybody, absolutely. Um, I'll just point out for the record that the, uh, the director of elections works for the entire board, not just for the president. And that is certainly how things have operated in the past, and I'm hoping that that's how things are going to operate in the future because the board just had a meeting to discuss what it is we wanted to do. If the president has a different idea tomorrow, he doesn't have the authority to undo what the board has done. If we need to make a motion and a vote on what we just decided to do, I am more than willing to make it right now. Um, I don't want to waste our time, but um, it sounded like what I heard from Margaret was she's going to follow what Jim tells her to do tomorrow, not what we just told her to do in the last half hour. No, that's not the one Margaret said. Margaret is a point of contact, like she used to do with Marianne, but she says she will send it to all of us. Right, but she's going to follow the direction of what we agreed to in this meeting. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I have, I have no problem sharing it with you all before it goes out. There's no problem with that. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, anything else? Okay. Okay, so it's 5, 540, and the meeting is closed. Um, we need a motion. Okay. Motion or just motion to close, uh, please. Motion. Motion. Anybody I move, second? I move you close the meeting. Second? Is there a second? Second that motion, uh, Mr. President. That's Alex. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, it, it's 540, the meeting is closed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Good night.